so funny. Anyway, today I it came to me to talk about spirit edibles. And in a moment, I'm going to do the spirit animal, pull three cards about spirit animals for the purpose of contemplation to actually get us to think more about ourselves individually and our own needs and desires. It's a time of the year where people want to still be busy and want to finish up on their goals and their activities and still participate in group activities, but finding that that they don't have the actual energy to do so and maybe being a little bit bothered by it instead of maybe just relaxing and going with the flow and just do it, take a nap, sleep more, um, eat a little bit more, you know, be a little bit less social because that's just how you feel. You don't always have to force yourself to obey. You don't always have to force the body to obey what the mind wants because sometimes the mind is busy and then the body wants rest and they're not necessarily in agreement because we want so much, we desire to do so much. So I'm going to read a little bit about spirit animals and the purpose of spirit animals and about the habits of hibernation and some animals that hibernate as well as picking a card or three cards to focus on, to think about, to contemplate and to kind of think about yourself as that animal and that the habits of that animal and and how can you actually study this animal to figure out more about yourself, observe its habits and use its habits to investigate, but then to maybe incorporate some of their energies and ask these spirit animals for your for guidance and for wisdom there. So there is a concept called spirit animals and it varies across cultures and beliefs. And in general, a spirit animal is believed to be a representation of an individual's inner self or spiritual guide. And here are some common purposes for the spirit animal. The first one is guidance. Spirit animals are often seen as guides or messengers that provide wisdom, support, and guidance to individuals. They may offer insight and help you navigate life's challenges and decisions. They come into place number two when it comes to protection. And I'll make this a little bit bigger because some people like to read this stuff for themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah. So next, we'll talk about protection. Spirit animals are believed to offer protection and serve as guardians. They provide a sense of security and help ward off negative energies and influences. Next, your connection to nature. Spirit animals are often associated with the natural world and can help individuals deepen their connection to nature and its cycles. Because this is what we're going through is a cycle, you know, the change of seasons. They may symbolize certain qualities or characteristics found in the animal kingdom. Next, number four is self-discovery. Spirit animals can serve as mirrors reflecting aspects of the individual's personality, strengths, and weaknesses. They can aid in self-discovery and personal growth with encouraging an individual to explore and embrace different aspects of themselves. Next is symbolism. Now, whenever I find a strange animal, a dead animal or a strange insect, something that's unusual to me that calls out to me, or maybe like I have peacocks and then I go to someone's home and they have peacocks and they got a peacock scarf. Like when I keep seeing the animal, it's to me like angel numbers as a symbol of, hey, pay attention to this. So symbolism and meaning is number five. Spirit animals carry symbolic meanings that can resonate with the individual on a deep level. They can represent 
certain qualities, emotions, or life lessons that an individual can learn from or embody. Now, the way you interpret these, you know, it's going to be very individual to you. Sometimes um, it can represent more than one thing. The dead animals, they don't necessarily... Uh, have a negative meaning. You just have to look it up. So I'll do research and I just try to pay attention. It's all just one more thing you can do to pay attention to what's going on around you. And sometimes we get out of the habit of it. And it's just always, you know, a good thing to remember like, oh yeah, these things around me are here as clues. And if I want to hear the voices of my guides and, and be observant of what's going on around me, sometimes I have to focus in on these clues. I have to pay attention to my surroundings. So the next thing I wanna talk about is hibernation because at this time, it's winter time. It is time to take a break, folks. Uh, we can't run on you know, 80 mile an hour speeds consistently. You have to take breaks. You have to take a breath. You have to put yourself in park sometimes. Sometimes you have to be in neutral and then you might not like it, but sometimes you'll also be in reverse. And sometimes you have to shut the whole car off, you, you know, shut the whole engine down. You have to rest. You have to reflect going in reverse, looking backwards at your decisions and, and things. And sometimes you're in neutral. You just observe. You just let it go. Let things run through you. You don't have to um, get excited, nervous, angry. You don't have to react and respond to everything. Some stuff you just let slide past you. Even if it's an offer to do something or, you know, it could be, you know, like I said, people, maybe you don't want to be in a group activity today. Maybe you want to be by yourself today. So sometimes it's okay to be in neutral and just allow these things to happen. So the hibernation state is a state of dormancy that some animals enter during the winter months. It's a survival strategy to conserve your energy and endure harsh conditions when food is scarce. Now I'll say this, conserving your energy, that's right on point. When food is scarce, Sometimes at this time of year, other people can be depressed. So when I think of food being scarce, I'm thinking of sometimes people don't have the energy to give to you. So it, so food is scarce. So to endure this time, like maybe some people at this point are depressed, short patience. They, they don't, you know, that, that, that good feeling that you normally get from being around certain people or groups of people, it's not there. So you pull back. So you can build up on your own energy because there's there's not much out there to lend to others. At this point, sometimes it might be that you need as much energy as possible for yourself so you can't give it to others. See, there's this scarcity. Um, during the hibernation, an animal's metabolic rates are low or slow, the body temperature drops, and they enter into a deep sleep-like state. Animals that hibernate typically have adaptations to allowing, let me just put some water on the stove because I'm steaming. Well, and some cloves and some lemon and things and freshening up the air. Um, I like to just freshen the air up every day, like open the windows and let the house air out. Um, so anyway, back to what we were saying. During hibernation, an animal's metabolic rate is slow. The body temperature drops and they enter into a deep sleep-like state. Animals that hibernate typically have adaptations that allow them to store more energy. 
enough to sustain themselves throughout the winter. They often have a thick fur or some fat reserves. Now people are talking about gaining weight and maybe ladies may not be shaving their arm pits <laughs> or their legs right now but um you know they're gaining some fur and gaining some fat and you know it's some insulation and a lot of times you think you want to stay thin like this is the idea that we want to be thin too but um in some people that's grounding like taking in dairy products or getting some weight on your body you know You'll notice like some people can be very thin. They, they're they very quick, fast paced, maybe sometimes very nervous or they shake. You can literally see them shaking because they don't have these reserves on them and they uh, all energy passes through them so quickly. Like, whew. so it can seem like being thin can be healthy, but then it also maybe allows more to pass through you quickly and it might be difficult to process where people who maybe have some weight on them seem to tend to be more grounded and, and level and not as nervous, not as anxious, not, not as, um, not as, as fragile, but even sometimes that's what they would say jolly, right? Like, ha ha ha, these happy people that are comfortable in their bodies and okay with a little bit of meat on their bones and they can actually be very grounded individuals that you know we're not being taught that but so some animals that do hibernate bears such as a black bear grizzly bear hibernating in the winter they retreat to a den and enter a state of reduced activity lowering their metabolic rates and living off their fat reserves groundhogs woodchucks um, they dig a burrow and they dig burrows and go into the ground and sleep through the winter, awakening in the spring. Bats. Oh, man. We got plenty of bats here. Many bats hibernate during the winter. They seek out caves, mines, and other types of shelter locations. Then there's snakes and other species like rattlesnakes, garter snakes that hibernate into the ground and they gather up in large groups. That was one thing. I was um, actually thinking about is that, let me stop the share screen or should I share screen? One thing I was thinking about was How uh, some animals they do they they they're in a den together. Ooh, snakes! Who wants to see that, right? Like a bunch of snakes together. Oh wow, he put bats. But you know there'll be like a bunch of snakes together, a bunch of fuzzy animals together, and they look off comfortable. Because they're with their families all nestled up and cuddly and things like that. So what do you what can you take out from that? What what would be your takeout? I would love to hear in the comments, like what do you feel like is your hibernation schedule? And it's funny that we have these holidays during this time too that suggest Let's eat these big meals and get together and play games and have fun and spend time with the family. And school is out. I wish it was out for a longer period of time, like the whole winter, like maybe three months that you could stay home. I wish that for everybody, right? But um, maybe that's why they have those traditions to do this at this time of the year. So I'll go ahead and pull three cards and I'm going to ask the divine creator of all things to give us three animals that can give the, us a collective lesson on how to make adjustments during this period of winter, during this period of hibernation, and during this period where people are feeling out of sorts, unbalanced, and feeling like they're just too tired. Me personally, I just feel like 
I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the food I'm eating and I'm enjoying this little piece of meat right here on my side. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is me. I love it. Wow. Let me go to the floor to see the three cars that flew out on the floor. All right. Ugh. And I mean, literally three cards flew out on the floor. So these will be the three cards. And I'll show you the deck. It's very pretty. I got this a few years ago. The Divine Oracle. Divine Animal Oracle by Stacy. So... Wow, so funny. Just for numbers sake, one is 12, one is 30, and one is 32. All right, there is some duplication in there. Three, one, two, three, two. Okay, so the first one is the rhinoceros. So these are things you could look up because they there's so many videos about rhinoceros and, you know, well, spirit animals in general. There's so many. Right. So the first one is a rhinoceros. I don't know anything about what rhinoceros do in the winter. Then there is the fruit bat. Beautiful, beautiful fruit bat. Look at this giant Hawaii. All right. Then there is the orca. So in the plat back of, of or in the top or the side, I don't know how it views for anybody else, but there's a video running by Ranger Planet, and I'll actually put that in there. And then I'll go ahead and look these up too. The hyper um not the hibernations, but the actual videos about these spirit animals, the orca, but I'll also read them, but there's videos that have more extensive, uh, more extensive explanations about them as spirit animals. Now, the fruit bat is about kindness. Choose kindness, which isn't always easy. Kindness will always be repaid. Consider others in your decisions, especially with those less with less power than you. Repay your debts, spread the seeds of goodwill and your fortunes. And there's a story about Princess Latogi. I'm not going to read it, but more about the animal, the Samoan. Well. Because that fruit bat is also called a flying fox. I don't know if you saw that. Flying fox. So the Samoan flying fox is a protected animal in the Tonga, Tonga and Samoa because of its beautiful mythos and a mammal. It is a large flying fox in the Pacific with wingspan of what one meter. So that's about three feet. Usually this species does not form large colonies, but exists as a monogamous pair with children. Wow, family. Fruit bats, which are also known as front flying foxes, play a key role in the pollination of seeds dispersal throughout their habitat. Rather than using sonar, they have keen eyesight and hearing, and they are also very intelligent. They suckle their young, and our caring parents. The magic is that fruit bats are a vital part of the ecosystem, ensuring seeds are spread and fertility of the land is secured. The energy here is one of fertility, plentifulness, and inviting flying fox energy into your workings when you wish to invoke more kindness and fertility. Interesting because it's the two parents and the children. And here we are talking about this winter is bundling up and spending time with your family, right? So that little video was playing is it's pretty much over. But now here is a time when you are inside and you can spread more seeds, right? You can plant more thoughts and, um, and 
and water them and watch them grow. Now they're not, you know, so as you spend more time with your family, what is it that you're, what seeds are you planting? Because I can hear some people sometimes say, oh, I got to go to dinner with my family or, oh, I have to do this. And it, it's kind of like uh, a grudge instead of an opportunity. So I would say, look at this time as an opportunity, not to try to convert people and change people and fix people, but to spread seeds. What good are you giving? Because I think we've been in this cycle of trying to fix, control, and change instead of allowing people to be themselves. The same people that you're talking about, you in waves have changed and grown over time and allow people to have their own journey and path and change in these waves. But what they're going to remember about you, how is someone going to want to imitate you, be like you, or come to you for advice when you're not even presenting this loving image to them in the first place? Or even it could be teaching them how to respect you and love you and respect your boundaries because even some discipline is still love. So don't think that being nice all the time and saying yes all the time is beneficial and loving that actually can spoil people in it. What you're doing by teaching people to respect your boundaries is teaching them about yourself, how to love you, but it also teaches them how to love themselves because you're now an example as you stand up for yourself and in provoke or invoke your boundaries, right? So that's a lot. I didn't want to go too much about that, but just remember all parts of love. It's not rudeness. It's not arrogance. It's not people showing off or trying to be better than someone else or even trying to fix them or change them, but definitely mutual respect and love. And then also still showing people that you can have boundaries and you can actually have self-care by taking care of yourself. You can actually say no. All of this is a part of teaching, even teaching your kids that by example, if you don't want anybody to touch you or hug you, if you don't want to eat that, if you don't want to go there, then it's okay to actually say no. Teaching people to say no as well. Now, then there's the orca. I'll show you the picture again. And look, there she's actually sleeping in that picture. So with the orca, you are walking along in your bloodline, in the bloodlines of your ancestors. You are an individual who makes your own destiny. Seek better communication with family, nourish yourself, exercise, extreme self-care, share your skills with others. Keepers, talk about on the notes. With the animal, Orcas look very distinctive. Their black and white skin is immediately recognizable. Their 50 interlocking inward leaning teeth are perfectly designed for hunting and ether location. And it's estimated that a fully grown orca can consume up to 2000 kilograms of food per day. They are highly effective hunters. Thus the term killer whale and they hunt in highly organized pods. While these members of the dolphin family are incredible physically, it is, science, it is what scientists are beginning to learn are their co culture that is interesting. Orcas live in a metro lineage, meaning they stay met in matriarchal lines, matriarchal lines with great grandmothers, grandmothers, mothers, daughters, and all the calves that travel together to stable metro line in one very stable metro line that is usually around five generations deep. A number of metro lines may make up a pod that comes and goes freely. All the members of the pod use the same set of sounds and songs in their own dialect 
This language is important for the bonding of the families and finding each other in difficult conditions. A final grouping, a number of pods coming together in what scientists call a clan. When the clans come together loosely, it's called a community. While the clans share similar language and ancestry, communities don't share language, but do share territories. For all their savage reputation, there, are, there has never been a fatal attack of orca in the wild. In fact, the only recorded fatalities have occurred in captive orcas. And it is not known whether these deaths were accidental deliberate attempts by the whale to harm or not. So wild orcas have actually recorded as being friendly and cooperative with humans. The magic with the orca is, orca magic can be raised by singing your own song by the sea. It is a feminine magic that can be used to help heal breaches in family relationships. Orca magic is also one that can ask for self-care and nourishment. If you are feeling weak in your body or your mind, especially with issues of vitality and endurance, the power of the orca can be called upon to ally. The symbolism is the water, the women under the water with the fish tail and so on. And so as it, we said, like in the winter time, during these periods of hibernation, you have this opportunity during the holidays or just being at home more to share the good parts with your family and your loved one. And I don't know if it could sum up any more what I had already said. And then the last one is the rhinoceros. He's got like a Buddhist on there, right? So I'll look that one up, number 32. With the rhinoceros, the, <laughs> the lesson is moderation. Seek moderation in all things. Find the middle path. Not everything is extreme choice of black versus white. Being passionate about something is positive, but to be obsessed may not be. Leave behind what you no longer need. It's kind of what I said earlier. Um, it's okay to be in neutral. It's okay to be an observer. It's okay to let things pass you without even uh, commenting on it or gaining some type of opinion or choosing sides. Uh, we don't have to always do that. And I'm thinking moderation while we're at home, we might eat a little bit more, but we do need to remember not to eat too much, right? <laughs> or drink too much or whatever it is. So the animal, there are five species of rhino left in the world and all are in law, hmm, all are in danger of becoming extinct. I think moderation is in danger of becoming extinct. Because everyone has to be so emotional about everything triggered all the time. And then they have to always express that they're triggered. So this is mainly because the trade in rhino horns for so-called medicinal purposes and habitat loss. Asia, specifically Vietnam, is one of the largest market for rhino horns. Although killing rhinos for the horns is illegal. Poaching has become a so prevalent that numbers have sunk. The last male white rhino died in Kenya in 2018. In the wild, adult rhino have no natural predators other than man. Although baby rhinos do not or do get taken by wild hogs, crocodiles, and big cats. Yikes. Rhinos are distinct in their shape they look like they are wearing boxing armor. And for their horns, which is primarily made of keratin, oh, and protein found in the hair and nails, they are big, heavy animals weighing 700 kilograms. And yet they are mostly gentle and are quite methodical in their way of visiting 
places each day, making them easy to hunt. Um, rhinos are, have poor eyesight, but wonderful sense of smell. <laughs> they also have sensitive prehensile lips and enable them to feel the plant which they are about to feed. Interesting. I just had to visualize that, like mm, putting it on their lip. But the magic of the rhino is a beautiful dance between strength, power, and moderation. This is an incredibly powerful animal, which yet this is balanced with calm restraint. Uh, I was um, thinking about it. <laughs> they, they, I don't. I don't even know what the reference is, but it's kind of like using dynamite to do something small. Like you're trying to do something small, but then you use something big and explosive. So it's like even though this animal is very big, it's still very gentle. And um, I think these are wonderful lessons. Like one in moderation, one in the bloodlines, and with the fruit bat. Gosh, I forgot already. Kindness. So, oh, there, yeah, they're on the card. Kindness and using your, your voice, expressing, especially even letting your yes be yes and your no be no and genuine. So let me know what you think in the comments about how you can incorporate these, these spirit animals into your life and have a great week. And just remember not to be so hard on yourself. Allow yourself to go through these changes and maybe not even think so much about it, but just just allow yourself to take naps, allow yourself to veg out, allow yourself to just be yourself because you have a natural pattern, a natural change going on during this time. We're not always in drive and it's okay to be in neutral and sometimes in park. <laughs>